Game Room Podcast. Today we have a special show for you. We're going to be discussing an interesting topic, childhood games, both good and bad, how they've aged and how we see them now. To my right here, I've got Jeremy Moore, and underneath we've got James Cowan. So, uh, say hi, guys. Hey, I'm Howdy. Jeremy Moore, and I'm right next to Mustafa. Yep. James? I'm James, and as always, I am I am underneath everyone, <laughs> just like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, <clears throat> okay, cool, nice. Dude. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, all right, let's... So for news, we're going to keep it kind of basic. Uh, sure. You know, we're nearing the beginning of July, so I've got a list in front of me of games that are going to be launching in July. And I'm only going to talk about the ones that really catch my attention because, you know, don't want to pick up any shovelware or anything. Uh, okay. We've got for Windows and PS4, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 13. Now, Romance of the Three Kingdoms might be a little bit on the obscure side, but people might know it better from the hack and slash series that evolved from this franchise known as Dynasty Warriors. So wow. this is a strategy game, you know, it's basically the early stages of this popular uh, hack and slash franchise, so it's pretty interesting. I'd give it a buy, personally, if I had more money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, that comes out on the 5th of July, following Independence Day. Um, on the 12th, for Windows, PS4, and Xbox One, we've got Ghostbusters. Which I'm assuming is based on the movie, so I only said totally, that because I totally thought irrelevant. Might might movie. get a chuckle or two. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna be a big old shovelware game. Yeah, it'll it sounds be, like yeah. shovelware. It's like it's the movie itself is avoid. gonna be shovelware. It's gonna be a movie game, guys. Yeah, I had to mention it because movie the movies movie, are always good. Yeah, the well, the movie is getting so many complaints already, and it's not even. Is it? Did it just come out, or is it not oh, even it's not out, out yet? yet. Okay, it's not and, out people, yet. and people <laughs> already like, hate it. Suck. So I'm assuming the game is going to be a masterpiece, just <laughs> based on you know the crisscross. Fifteenth um, on Nintendo 3DS, we've got Monster Hunter Generations. Uh, you know, I haven't really played much of the Monster Hunter games myself, but Jeremy, I know you played, uh, 4 Ultimate. Yeah, and... and I absolutely loved it. I didn't really mess around with Monster Hunter too much. I played Monster Hunter 3, or try, whatever, a little bit, but not really, but I absolutely adored Monster Hunter 4, so... Mm -hmm. Monster Hunter is a good series. Yeah, yeah, and Generations is looking like it's shaping up to be a great game. Remember, that's coming out on the 15th. 15th. Um, Losers. On the 20th... Wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, on the twenty eighth, we've got Toki Den Two coming out for PS3, PS4, and PS Vita. Same company behind the Warriors games and the Romance of the Three Kingdom, Nobunaga's Ambition, those types. Uh, Toki Den is eerily similar to Monster Hunter with the combat of like a Dynasty Warriors. It's it's a strange type of game. I played the demo for one of the other games in the series, and it was uh, uh, the first one, since this is the second one. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I think you get to like create a character and go on missions, so that's pretty cool. And then for a date to be announced, Fallout Shelter will be coming to PC. Pretty so, cool. That's cool. Hang on. Uh, I do want to go back here, because you have a list uh, on the 12th. Uh, Necropolis comes out, it seems. Yes. Ooh, yes, yes. So that's awesome. And Jeremy and I, I mean, uh, Jeremy way more closely than I have been following it. Uh, we went twice in a row at PAX. Both times yeah, at PAX, we found them, sniffed them out, and played it. And yeah, I'm excited to actually mm -hmm. get our hands on that finally. The real deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's, that's one of those up. games that I've been very excited about uh, because it is a Souls like, and that's my like favorite little subgenre of action game. Uh, and it's been something that I love. And it followed, like, kind of closely, but then passively, so I forgot that it was coming out so soon. So this is, like, mm -hmm. a little surprise to me. Like, hey, by the way, Necropolis comes out in less than a month, so that's exciting. It's too bad it shares uh, a date with such a blockbuster title as Ghostbusters. Yeah, so seriously. I am going to have to buy that later, Ghostbusters. <laughs> as, well. Well, as, as, as well as priority, guys. As video do. Ball. Video <laughs> Ball was also coming out that very same day. So I was just gonna, looking at Video Ball, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hype, man. 
I'm sorry, Necropolis. I'm leaning a little bit more in the Ghostbusters direction. No. Um, so, cool. cool. We got through that schedule. Uh, just a couple more things I wanted to highlight before we got into our big discussion of the week. Um, I have as well, but go for it. Hearthstone's Weekly Tavern Brawl launched at noon today, and this one is interesting. Uh, every minion in your deck is Shifter Zerus, who is a one-cost, one-one legendary with the effect change into a different minion every turn it's in your hand. So literally every turn, every minion changes, and it is the most completely random and uncontrollable cycle of events I think I've ever seen in a Tavern Brawl. Um, I played Warlock earlier against a mage, and I'm pretty sure the match, like, almost went to fatigue out of just sheer nonsense. It, it was so, just, it, it really dragged on. But, um, I think if you play as, like, Hunter or something more fast-paced, you know, the, the match will go by qu quicker and you'll probably get different minions. Because I think in those Tavern Brawls, like, even when you can get random minions, I think they are still slightly predisposed to the class you're playing. I'm not 100% certain on that, but... I think that might be the case. Um, yeah, and on the subject of Blizzard and the Warcraft franchise, I finally got a chance to see the Warcraft movie, and Ooh, uh, was nice. I just wanted to briefly say that I think it was the first good video game movie I've ever seen. And That's I did it! I had such a good time, you know, watching that movie, and I know, critically, it hasn't been received particularly well. But I think that it was, I, I don't know, it, it wasn't, in my opinion, trying to be campy enough to appeal to a mainstream audience. I thought it still took things in its own direction without being afraid of not necessarily reaching the types of people who would go see, like, a Marvel movie. You know, it, it was, it, it, to me, felt true to Blizzard's style. And, you know, having the... the session that I went to at PAX on the movie, you know, a lot of the stuff that they were talking about really seemed to be executed very honestly and authentically here, so I was happy with that. Um, I definitely would recommend that people see it when they get a chance. James, you yeah. said you had another piece you wanted to? I got two to? things. Yeah, I got two things. I'm going to springboard right off the Blizzard thing and say Overwatch competitive <laughs> mode came yes. out. Am I wrong? Yeah, it did. I it came out it. yesterday. I don't have time, but yeah, Jeremy, you tried it. Yeah, I finished getting my uh, calibration done last night, got my 10 matches out of the way, and then a couple more. I'm currently ranked 45. Uh, it's really, really fun. Basically, um, Overwatch players that haven't done it yet are people that like competitive games. Uh, the rank system uh, works on a super simple to understand basis. Your rank is somewhere between 1 and 100, 1 being the lowest, 100 being the highest, average players being at about 50. So with a score of 45, I'm like just below average, working my way up. Uh, every time that you uh, win a ranked match, you get one point. Every time you lose, you lose half a point. Uh, so it's a lot easier to gain than it is to lose, and you'll always end up mm. kind of around where you want to be. Ranked is perfect if you want to play with people who are going to try to take the game a little bit more seriously. If you just want to go crazy and do six Winstons or something ridiculous and just kind of have a blast, go ahead and stick to quick play. But um, mm. don't feel too scared about ranked, because ranked isn't harder. Ranked is actually just playing against people who are the exact same skill level as you. So it's, in a way, a more fair experience for you. Um, and the games are structured a little bit more differently, so there's a little bit more to learn with <coughs> how exactly you can win or lose the game within that, which is fun because if you feel like you've kind of hit your skill ceiling as far as knowledge goes for how to win quick play games, now you have something new to learn. It's really, really phenomenal, and it launched yesterday. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I got the update. Didn't try it yet. I'm nervous to jump in, but uh, if it's if it's as you say, then it sounds it sounds awesome. I bet I'll be some really cra crazy low rank. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it just depends on how I feel that day. Yeah, who knows? It really well, it's that, it, it takes well you ten matches before you get your score calibrated for the first time, right. so it's not entirely up to one thing. Just as long as you communicate with your team and try to do your best, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Yeah. Also, last thing from me. How about that Steam Summer Sale? Big anybody, deals anybody PC going gamers? on. Yeah, uh, huge, huge deals, big cuts in prices. And my favorite thing that I've noticed is not only is it games on sale, but Steam Hardware is huge cuts on prices. Wow. Uh, Steam Link going for $34.99. Oh, man, uh, maybe I'll get one. Steam Controller going for $34.99. I think I'm going to buy that. 
the Vive is there, not on sale at all, and uh, but it is in the it is <laughs> still eight hundred dollars. Yeah, it's still eight hundred dollars firm, and uh, you know uh, other bundles of hardware as well. But uh, uh, Jeremy, have you scored any good deals? Uh, you want to share that you, uh, that you? I haven't bought too much stuff yet. I'm waiting for payday to come. I have got a couple things. Uh, I picked up Age of Empires two HD yesterday. Ooh, I think it was I like eighty. It was, I think it was like eighty percent off, so I got it for three bucks. Oh, uh, I might and that. apparently the mo- online multiplayer was reworked to still work nowadays, which is phenomenal. Uh, I'm it. also I looking agree. forward to getting the Stick of Truth, which uh, is yeah, the, South Park uh, the, the South Park game. It's currently seven forty nine, uh, mm-hmm. up down from its regular price of thirty bucks, so that's seventy five percent off. <laughs> uh, those are the two big ones that I'm waiting for. I'll probably pick up a Steam Link as well, since it's like fifteen bucks off right now. Mm-hmm. And I also might grab Mountain Blade with Fire and Sword, because that's also 75% off. Cool. Well, the sales are going till the 4th, so get them while they're hot. Um, I, myself, uh, I got green the green means, mean greens, uh, the mm-hmm. uh, mil- or, l- little green plastic soldier army men mm-hmm. game that I played at PAX. I loved it, so I picked that up. Uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna rebuy Hell Divers for PC because <laughs> screw it. And as it's a dual stick shooter, I think I might get myself a little uh, Steam controller to go along with it because they're so dang cheap. And I think uh, you can get Hell Divers with all of the DLC for pretty cheap right now. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that though. <laughs> DLC is a real game changer. Yeah, I, I mean the DLC is about a buck forty-five a pop. So you can get the base game for eleven dollars, oh, okay. or the base game and all fifteen DLC packs. Wow, that's a lot of DLC for twenty four dollars. So much. That's a lot of DLC. Forty percent off. Those or you can just though. Yeah, or you can just pick and choose the DLC that you want for between a buck forty nine to a buck ninety nine a pop. Mm. So there's a lot of really good deals going on right yeah. now. I'll work it out tonight and then I'll then I'll go for it. Um, I've been working hard, I've earned it. We stop it, what do we got? We were off news last week, so I do want to talk about a couple of things that happened last week that we didn't talk about. Uh, oh, okay. Number one, a new game launch uh, on the 24th, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. That's the Fire Emblem Shin Megami Tensei crossover that if you look at any trailers for, I don't think you'll recognize anything from either franchise. Oh, Yet still, it's... Insane. It, uh, it still looks pretty interesting. I, myself, am going to wait on it a little bit to see what people are saying, but uh, critically, it's doing pretty well right now. Um, it offers a very... It's very anime. I think that's the best way to describe it. You know, it's... Um, a lot of it is themed around J-pop, which I know is a common association when you hear the words Fire Emblem. And, um, yeah. <laughs> the medieval strategy... Anyway, um... No, it, it does. It looks really interesting, and you know, it's it's an RPG on the Wii U, which they have a pretty good track record for with Xenoblade Chronicles X. You know, and uh, it, it's it does seem pretty interesting. They were showing some footage at uh, E3 during their Treehouse Live sessions, and it totally looks like a quality game. You know, I'll probably pick it up somewhere down the line, mainly because it's got Fire Emblem characters in it. But you know, <laughs> it, it still looks like a good game. Uh, also, I know we touched on it briefly, but oh my god, saddest Kickstarter failure ever, Mighty Number no. 9. <laughs> you know, that game yeah. launched, and Rip. it tanked. It, it got was, pretty bad reviews. It was unbelievably poorly received in, in terms of critics. You know, um, Keiji Inafune, who was the game's producer and creator and everything to the game, said that he would... Sort of, he he said he hasn't gotten his fix on side-scrolling platformers yet, which, you know, I'll, I'll go all in, man, for sure. But uh, it's gonna be rough recovering from this one. Still, I am interested to see more about his game Recor, which is going to be an Xbox One exclusive. That was the one with like the robotic dog and mm-hmm. the girl, and it seemed to have like, right. platforming elements and like a little bit of third-person shooter with some. Like, just fast-paced action stuff. Seems like the type of cool, game uh, you play. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It artistically looked very nice. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to mention, really quick, and we're just going to move on. Uh, speaking of Kickstarter, the Zed Kickstarter got to its goal. Nice. Congratulations. Hey, Congrats. Props to Zed. Good job for that team. I'm interning there, so more adventures to come for me, which is exciting. So, Woo! Figured I'd share a little bit of yeah, news. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Local dude. news. Yeah. Local right. news. You heard it here yeah. first. 
actually, you, you probably heard it on Kickstarter first, because that's where... I if mean, you are, in fact, a Kickstarter backer. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, so guess what, guys? It's time what? to get into our discussion. It's yes. discussion time. I'm gonna I'm gonna lead us with a few topics, and we're each gonna sort of hit on a point. I want a childhood game that you liked, mm-hmm. a child that was good, a childhood game that you liked that wasn't so good that you came back and played and still enjoyed, and then a childhood game that you enjoyed. And then came back to and hated it. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I think we should start on a bad note so that way we can end, you know, with smiles. So, what's a game that you went back and played from your childhood that you found out was actually really horrible? Actually, a gar. Oh my god. So, um, there was this game, I think it was called Jet Force Gemini. I had it on the GameCube. Probably the GameCube, maybe the N64, I don't exactly recall. Uh, but it was this, like, sci-fi game. I remembered it as being, like, this phenomenally good-looking space shooter run-around adventure game that was mm-hmm. so terrifying because everything was, like, so real and good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I played it a few months ago, and it was garbage. <laughs> and it, it felt like garbage, and its controls yeah. were really bad, and <laughs> the art was incredibly limited due to technical limitations yeah. and also the amount of energy put in. I think the game was made by Rare, if I remember mm. correctly. It, I, don't, I don't know. It might. Oh, have good. Been. good. It was just one of their like few very bad games from that era, but it was it was just it was not good at all. The audio <laughs> was bad. The graphics were bad. The controls mm-hmm. were bad. Everything was just bad about the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Rare. They're gonna come up again, actually, because I have one for them later on. But uh, yeah, definitely. You know, they they've had some, a lot of their games are really dated in a way where if you go back and play them, you can't help but laugh. But like, like for example, like a Banjo Kazooie or Banjo Two. You go back and you look at those. Obviously, it's clear why they're classics. But then you look at a game like Grabbed by the Ghoulies. And yeah. It's so it, it's so I, I don't know how to describe it like um our different. friend nick who was yeah, on one of the e3 streams was different. playing it it's definitely not it's not a it's normal not game by any it's stretch not, it wasn't bad he was no. into it but it he was, was playing it again so its own thing <laughs> everything about that game felt like it was from a different time which i guess it was yeah it was from i mean the classic xbox it, it was if, a very different time it for felt games. like a playable goosebumps from what yeah, I saw, yeah. which, you know, I, I loved Goosebumps books as a kid, you know, I mean, it's just, the you it's know. It's almost like they made a game out of a kid's show, but they did it, like, really well. But there was yeah. no show. Yeah. There was no kid's show based off of it. It just kind of had the kid's show vibe. Yeah, it was very it was kind of kid's show you can go back yeah. and watch today, like a Spongebob or a, yeah. or a Blue's Clues. You I know, like... you really liked old-fashioned Blue's Clues. <laughs> um, I guess I... I can't say for sure, but this one came to my head. I don't know if it's bad because I I couldn't come back and play to it, play it because it was for the original Xbox, mm-hmm. and maybe it's on PC somewhere or like a I can get it. But it's uh, when I was in I want to say like fifth or sixth grade, I got a ex- steering wheel for my Xbox. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, uh, or no, this is probably like fourth grade actually. Because uh, it was the original. And so, to go with it, I decided to just grab a, some kind of racing game. And, like, one of the first ones I saw for, like, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, was called Midtown Madness 3. And, oh, oh. my goodness, I loved that game to pieces. It was, like, just <laughs> a, just kind of a generic game where you could drive not even, like, supercars, just random cars, like, minis and, and uh, just weird cars, like... You'd start out with basic cars, and then you get mm-hmm. up to the supercars as you went on to the campaign. But my brother and I would play that on hours on end, and you could play. You could drive around Paris, and you could drive around Washington D.C. Did I ever say that? Yeah. Um, but we would just do it for ages and ages and ages, and just kill tons of time. We we didn't even like. We weren't playing the game much. We were just hanging out. Yeah. Just, just driving, driving around. cars around, but it had like these jumps across like pretty scenic like famous spots like mm-hmm. the Eiffel Tower and uh, um, you know the the Louvre and several rivers and stuff in Paris and we just had a blast playing that game uh, I'd love to go back and try it again I'm sure the graphics are appalling 
They and don't look that bad. Shot. They're pretty really? cute. I'm watching it right now. Honestly, yeah. this this game is aged pretty decently. It looks adorable. That's good. I'm happy to see that. I'd like to go back. I don't know, but like I seem to remember just the campaign not holding my attention very well. Also, I was pretty young, so I didn't really uh, know too much about. Like I was pretty bad at it, um, so it didn't hold my attention. But I don't know. That was that was one of my childhood games that I just. <laughs> I just remembered. Uh, it's um, pretty tough. One that I played that I loved, and I, I, I understand why I loved it, and it had the makings of a truly great game, but then in execution was just really, really bad, was Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, which was a game by Sega about this young boy who finds this chicken suit. And then his job is to roll eggs over fruit to hatch the eggs and save these chickens who are captured by crows. Now, I know the premise sounds really stupid, but that's actually the part of the game that I thought was the best. So, like, it's this really cute, silly boy and his friends in these chicken suits rolling eggs around. And you use eggs for everything. You use eggs to get an extra jump. You hatch them to get creatures that fight for you. You use them to, like, roll over enemies and everything. And none of that is the stuff about the game that made it so bad. It's that the mechanics are so poorly implemented. Like, <laughs> if you you have to bounce on an egg in order to reach certain ledges because they're too high, right? So if you get your egg over to a certain size, you get an increased jump. But if you miss your jump... By just a second, you fall back down, but you leave your egg over the ledge. So now you can't get the extra jump, and in some areas, literally the only solution to that is suicide and starting over. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, I know. Did not test it very I know well. this sounds ridiculous, but you have to remember, right? This was a Sega game for the GameCube. This was the same era as Sonic Heroes. You know, So I, I got to basically get a front row seat to the sort of apocalyptic decline that was Sega's reputation and abilities. You know, and oh and this game is a prime example. It's like, you have everything here that works. The story is cute, the soundtrack is good, the areas are interesting, and the visuals pop. But when it comes time to actually play the game, everything Bad. is broken. <laughs> you know? It's like... They and, just didn't put the time in. And, like, when it worked, it felt great, which I think is also how I would describe most Sonic games, you know? It's like, when you're running, and you're just straight up running, it feels awesome. The only time Sonic games feel bad is when they don't work, and they don't work too often. So, you know, it, it was just the start of a really bad situation for Sega. But I, I, I remember why I loved it as a kid, you know? Like, it was a fun little adventure. You know, it was a good game. But or it was good at the time, but you know, it's looking back on it, it just it was just mechanically horrendous, you know? I uh, goodness. <laughs> goodness. Goodness gracious. So you know what's a game you know what's a game that I played as a kid that was bad as a kid, bad now, bad bad all the time? Yeah. It was <laughs> my friend got it as a joke for a dollar. Sneak King. Oh what? god, those Burger King games. <laughs> <laughs> I had the racing ones. So I, I had bad. some about, like, flight, I think. So bad. Yeah. Just, why did they make those? Fun fact, like, four years after Billy Hatcher launched, they came out with one of those Burger King games for it. And oh. it, was just, it was awful. I don't understand yeah. why they did that. Oh, my goodness. And then they, yeah, like... That was a really weird ad <laughs> campaign. Yeah, no. I mean, years after, good, years after the game launched, there hasn't been a sequel since then. You know, the closest we've gotten is, I think Billy Hatcher was in, like, Sonic Riders. You know, but, like, no, that series died a slow and painful death. It was a really Rest tragic premonition, I would argue, for what ten years from now will spell for the Sonic franchise. Because people yeah. can't people can't hold on to that forever. They'll keep trying, they, but they just they can't. eventually have to give up. Yep, exactly. Um, so so what's second the, one, the next type, a game that you know is bad from your childhood, but you uh. still enjoy playing. <sighs> That's a toughie. If you guys do don't you have, have one, do you have one. I do if have you one. Have, go ahead and say that. I will start off. Do, yeah. We're back to rare. 
Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> and I know, you know, people are going to come at me hard for this because this game is loved so mm -hmm. widely, and I understand why. Last summer, I played that game to literal 100% completion twice. You know, it, it, it's like one of my favorite games ever, but it is so bad. <laughs> like, it. I, I know it's iconic, but it opens up with a rap. Which I think, you know, is... Oh, yeah. I think that's a bad sign to start. Not to everyone's taste. <laughs> Not yeah. strong. And then, uh... The, the one thing about the game that I think really sort of sells it short is the tag barrel. Which is the mechanic that there are... It's a collectathon, A rare collectathon similar to Banjo-Kazooie. But, um... All resources are character-specific. So there are, like, bananas for certain characters, and golden bananas for certain characters. Golden bananas are different from bananas, so keep up. Okay, um, keep and then up. There, are also, there are also medals and, like, uh, blueprints, and there's, like, a d different things for each character, right? And if a character, like, for example, Chunky Kong has green bananas, while Donkey Kong has yellow bananas. If Donkey Kong walks towards the green bananas, they're faded and he can't collect them. And the only way to switch characters is to get to these tag points called tag barrels. Now, the reason that that is so awful is because as you're playing a level, you basically have to commit the entire thing to memory if you want to 100% the game, or you're going to have to do an obscene amount of backtracking. Which I get can simulate the idea that you're getting more playtime out of it, but if you're going back and forth down the same path, you know, it, it gets redundant. And I know this. I completed the whole game. I collected every banana. <laughs> so I've seen every corner of that map five oh times, you know? And <laughs> it's it, it's a very flawed mechanic. And, uh, and another thing is they have these mini games, these mini game barrels, where um, they're just games that are completely separate from the main game. Like, you go in there and it's like, uh, chase this claptrap into a pit, or stealth around these guys while you go down a hallway. And. They seem like, that seems like a fun idea, right? You earn a golden banana, you help progress, you play mini games. But the mini games are so horrible and tedious, and some of them are borderline impossible. Like, there are 20 mini games, I believe, in the whole game, and like three, dif three difficulty levels for each one, because they recycle some of them throughout different levels. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you want to 100% the game, you're going to have to go through some really perilous stuff. That is not even like, it's not even like, this is difficult and fair, and that's enjoyable. It's like, this is impossible for reasons <laughs> that are not your fault, but the fault of the developer. You're you know? just asking too much from yeah, the Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, one of them, you have to memorize, or no, you have to have your reflexes ready, because the screen fades to black, and then it fades back out, and you've got all five Kongs and one golden banana, and you have to shoot the banana every time. On the easiest difficulty level, it's easy to move over there and press the button in time. By the time you get to the third difficulty level of this minigame, you literally have to have your cursor on the banana before it shows up. I mean, before the screen fades in, before you can How? see it, you have to How be targeting it. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know? It's I, I mean, don't get me wrong, they have plenty of elements of that game, like, I love the level design, I love the areas, I like how they handled the soundtrack, the characters are fun, the multiplayer is cute, you know, but it, it's just so many sort of fate ceiling flaws in the mechanics that it, it just, and, and it's not even like this is a for the times thing, because Rare has shown they can do it right with the Banjo-Kazooie games, so it, it was so it's just... like, what happened? But... Yeah. It was just a bad. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that game, and I I could still play it a thousand times. But objectively, as a game critic, I can acknowledge that it's not very good. <laughs> I can't really think of a game that I really like playing, but I know it's bad. But I can remember another game that I really liked playing, but is garbage. And looking at it, it's like, how? How did I yeah. get by on something so inferior? And that was a uh, Men in Black on the Game Boy Color. What? Wow. Which was just... <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. Oh it was my just goodness. shovelware. It this, was just yeah. really bad shovelware. Uh, it it, was, it like. was like an action platformer game on the on the Game Boy Color. That and I mean, use your imagination. It's pretty much what you think it is. Yeah. It was bad. You no. would go left to right, and there would be stuff that looked more or less like an enemy, I guess. <laughs> kind of. It kind of looked like a spider. kind of looked like a person, like a dog. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and you could jump on it, or I think you had a gun, and <laughs> at one point, 
you got the that what was the small gun the grasshopper i think it was in the movie yeah. the yeah. really strong one and it had three bullets and wow. there was a boss at the end and uh if you hit him with all three bullets <laughs> then he would just die instantly like that that was the strat for killing the boss <laughs> except you got the grasshopper and then you had to get past like eight more enemies before you got to the boss. <laughs> so it's like, so I either have to jump around these enemies or I have to waste all my grasshopper yeah. ammo and then I can't use it. So it was it was very bad. And I don't think it had save states for some reason. Oh, like it, it, oh. it was still using passwords. <laughs> we had saving that technology. Me of a, that we could write me, to memory. That reminds me of two games that I had for the Game Boy Color. A lot of them, you guys are going to laugh at this one. The Powerpuff Girls game. <laughs> Where nice. I, I believe right. you were required to play as Bubbles, but she could get two cell phones throughout the level, and you could use them to call one of the other sisters to like clear off all the other enemies. You could only do that under very specific circumstances, and the whole objective of the game was to beat him, the lobster yeah, creature. Yeah, the lobster yeah. man woman. Yeah, and it was it was horrifying. It was so. And here's the thing about these really bad games, right? Is that it's not like you play through them and they're really bad. You can't play through them. They are impossible. They're yeah. so difficult for it's no that reason. They were not tested. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's and it's oh like they're goodness. not they're not hard because it's like oh it's just, like Dark Souls hard where it's like oh it's just yeah. so hard to get past this. It's yeah. that it's that crap happens where yeah. it's like you're running and it's like okay so the only way for me to attack this enemy is to turn around but when i turn around they hit me instantly and i yep. can't hit them so yeah, it's not exactly. fair it's stuff like that <laughs> yeah and so it's they weird test hearing the you game. describe that game remind me a lot of hearing someone describe any atari game yeah yeah is That's anyone ever even so like oh cool yeah well the idea of this atari game was blah 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 and especially if it's like a game based off a movie like the et game yeah it's like why why are you doing that for that game? Why is E.T.? What? Yeah, so it's like, why thing, are you right? calling in your sisters? Why aren't you all together? Like, yeah, you're talking Atari. Atari. Atari's a console where most things, visually, you could not identify. So, yeah. based on technical limitations, it made sense, right? That but we're talking about a platform like the Game Boy Color that had games like the original Wario Land titles... And these games were well-designed platformers with, mm -hmm. you know, hazards that you could understand and power-ups that were usable. And everything about these games, you know, they worked. But, like, these are games that were There was during no a, excuse. Yeah, it was during an era where good games were being made, and they just could not pull it off, you know? Nope. But, I got, I got, I got uh, two games uh, for mine. Uh, the first one... Uh, was the Over the Hedge game. Oh, <laughs> You guys ever see Over the Hedge? I did see Over the Hedge years uh, ago. <laughs> uh, I think my buddy got it for the PS2. And there was just this mini game section of it that we liked. There was one mm -hmm. game where you just drove golf carts around and, like, bumped into each other. Mm -hmm. That was fun. We just, like, played with the go-karts. And so we played. We got a lot of hours in that game. Uh, the animations are cute too. I'm liking yeah. the way that this turtle kind of waddles around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean the, I watched the movie once and it wasn't. I didn't like it that much. Uh, but the game was fine. Yeah, I don't uh, remember and the, the other movie one very much. Yeah, it was so not good. <laughs> uh, and the other one was uh, Robot Wars game for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, and the reason I got it was because you could just build your own robots. And it's basically they took the famous robots from the TV show, which it was a TV show in mm -hmm. England. I don't know if it would ever add here, but uh, they basically you, you could make you can make your own robot, and I just enjoyed doing that. And you mm -hmm. make your robot and play through the campaign and beat all the famous ones, and it was fun. It was a good good little yeah. uh, another shovelware game. But here's a you kind know, of, nothing special. Here's a kind of on the spot one, guys. Huh? A yeah, game based on a movie, right? That you were yep. not expecting to be good. But was surprisingly Rings. actually okay. <laughs> any of or any of the Lord of the Rings games, I don't care. Any of those games were fantastic. I love it. I Even like the, the RTS game games. was good. What'd you say, James? I like the Transformers games. Yeah, I, I got the this. the first Transformers game for the Xbox 360, and I just like transforming and blowing shit up. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> um, uh, and then yeah, based off a movie. That was a few. I, I think there were a few. Over the Hedge was one of them. I think, uh, did you have one, Misawa? I think here's one that I think the general gaming community can agree on, right? 
uh, the Spider-Man games one, two, and three, based on the yeah. movies starring Tobey Maguire. Mind Those were you, really good. These are games yeah, based movies. on movies that were not good, <laughs> and yet they managed to be really awesome games. You know, like I Spider-Man Two is still like one of the most critically acclaimed superhero games ever made. You know, that game was awesome. It had, like, this really cool open world with, like, side quests. It was a Spider-Man game with side quests. What does that even mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was... It's like, what? But yeah, those, those the... were awesome. How about, uh... Actually, lots of them. Um, here we go. I'm gonna rattle them off. Uh, Battle for Middle-Earth 2 was a Lord of the Rings game. Yeah. Amazing RTS. Holy crap. Yeah, I really uh, liked that game. And then... Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Yep. Does Lego Star Wars count? Yeah, because they're That's literally based the off movies. a toy, based off a movie. Yeah, but they're but they are literally the yeah. movie, the same way that like um, Return of the King on the GameCube yeah. was. I think the Lego games though are a little bit different, only in the sense that Lego games sort of set their own standards. That while they're based off of content, they can take bad content and be good with them just because of the Lego brand. You know yeah, what I mean? if they weren't Lego, if it was like supposed to be like Luke Sk- uh, Luke Skywalker going around doing his thing, I don't know. It would it would definitely not work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Lego is so charming, and you c- and you can build, and that's yeah. yeah it's it is definitely it's it's so removed from the actual movie that it almost oh. doesn't count. Oh, I have one. Okay, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants the movie the game. I think I played that. I think I weirdly hated it. good. I think I knew someone that had that. <laughs> it was like yeah. a beat 'em up with like racing segments, and then you'd like, you it was you were doing the events of the movie. You were trying to travel through the movie, and you know, I never completed that game because it was one of those games where you had to get a certain amount of medals in order to move on in certain areas. Like, oh that's yeah, a, that's a really good game. You know, I don't understand how, but it, it was good. Well, a lot of Nickelodeon games were pretty good. Like, they had the Nicktoons Unite, where you could, like, play as a lot of the major characters, and those were, like, fun co-op beat-em-ups. Right. Weird yeah. games, though. I'm trying to think of all good movies. I think, I, I think, definitely Battle for Middle Earth 2 is probably the best Lord of the Rings game. Yeah. I think that there was also the, the Wrath of the, the Lich King, I think. The Witch King? Yeah, Rise of the Wrath Witch of... King was the that DLC. Was it. Yeah, I had that game and the DLC, and I had so much fun. I was—I actually have the box we had, over there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I need I to just, grab it. <laughs> I just threw out our box when we moved. I just got rid of it. I think uh, we had a lot of land sessions on that there game. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I still there have the box. <laughs> I wonder if it's on Steam. I need to get it. Yeah, I wonder if I can redeem this somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. It's EA, so it's, it might be on Origin. But yeah, this game was so freaking good. This isn't a movie, yeah. but uh, Jeremy, I'm sure you can at least level with me on this one. I know, James, you might have seen us play it uh, in the apartment at one point. Uh, the Dragon Ball Z fighting games. Um, not the newer ones, but like the Dragon Ball Z Budokai games. The, like the PS2 games, and they were like on the GameCube too. Not necessarily a movie, but uh, those games are really interesting and a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, they were not the most balanced from a fighting game perspective, but they were still, yeah. like, super there fan service There was one that had kind of, like, an open... It was, like, a little open-world brawly. I don't remember which one it was. Not brawly, the character brawly, but, like, yeah. a brawler. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, but there was, like, this open-world brawler one where uh, you had to go through... The very beginning of the game, you had to go through and you had to destroy these rocks that were in the way using, like, key blasts and yeah. stuff. And they would use up your key. And you could, like, pick up uh, consumables to get more back. And I used up too much key fighting monsters. And then I couldn't destroy the boulder. And I, I couldn't what figure out how to get more. For? I was playing it on the GameCube. Oh my god, you're talking I about Dragon Ball Z out... sagas, man. Yeah, I couldn't figure <laughs> out how to get my key back. Oh. So I was like, oh, I broke the game. I can't do it. That game is notorious for being the heaviest amount of wasted potential in anime game history. Like, yeah. Everybody looks back and says, I wish there were a good Dragon Ball Z sagas, because they were almost there. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, cool, like, I can be Goku, and it's not just a fighting game. Like, I can actually run around and beat up bad guys yeah. instead of my brother. Like, this is great. <laughs> or in my case, get beaten up by my brother, because I was younger, therefore I had I had inferior intellect. Yeah. He literally just was more mature than me. His brain was better. <laughs> I didn't stand a chance. There was no way. 
Yeah, that was most of my gaming experience as well. Just um, getting beaten. Mustafa had the opposite gaming experience with his yes, brother. Yes, yes, I was, I was the oldest brother, so I, I kind of just... Re- I mean, I still kind of do that, but, <laughs> you yeah, know. Now there's no excuse for yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. They're fully grown. Yeah, they just, they're just not as good as me. Um, <laughs> Alright, I want to do real quick uh, best childhood game. Like, one that you played, that you still love, that you know is just good, and you'll defend it till you die. Uh, can we put a cap on childhood up to, like, you, if I would say anything, like, 2001. like, 7th grade and below? Okay, oh, yeah. so, like, so, like, before middle school, pretty Halo. much. Because I played the crap yeah. out of Fallout 3, but that was in, like, freshman year of high school, yeah. so that doesn't yeah, okay. count. Yeah, I think oh, that's... my God. So, the game that I had... There, there were, like, two games that I had such a blasty blast playing. Uh, mm-hmm. One, obviously, uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. For oh, anyone that owned a GameCube, you probably played that game at one point. Loved the heck out of that game, for obvious reasons. Doesn't mm-hmm. need to be stated. Uh, but on the N64, there was a Bomberman game. It was, like, one of the first Bomberman games that wasn't just the Bomberman, like, minigame, essentially. Like, it actually mm-hmm. had, like, an overworld, and you could go through and do stuff, yeah. and you had abilities. Yeah, I know, and I, I know I, that I, game, I always actually. got stuck. There was this boss that was a Sphinx. There was the yeah. boss that was a Sphinx, and it would shoot missiles and stuff. And I was, like, four or five. This <laughs> boss was way too hard for a five-year-old. This game was intended for, like, ten-year-olds, at least. And I should mm-hmm. not have been playing it. But I wanted to, because it was awesome. And I played... I tried to beat this Sphinx for hours. And this was one of those games I didn't checkpoint mm-hmm. you right before the boss. You had to beat the level again and then get to the boss. And I got so close one time after playing for, like, hours and hours. And I got so close. And I'm, like, literally one attack from winning. And then he beats me. And I'm, like, crying. I'm so frustrated. I'm actually crying tears, like, wailing yeah. sad. And my mom comes in to console me. And she's like, why don't you take a break and stop playing? And I'm like, because I'm having fun! <laughs> Just tears rolling down my face. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not having fun. That's a lie. <laughs> Actually, uh, really that's a good. That that's anecdote. a good. Uh, that's a good topic. Of games that have made you cry as a child. Games that have made you cry, oh. not out of being sad, because I cry yeah. a lot with video games from like story stuff. But like, yeah. they made you so mad that you cried, oh. or scared I, that you I cried. I know one. There's only one that's ever done it for me. That's. Uh, I think it was like. I think it was just called Lego Races. And it was, <laughs> I had that. Uh, you made yeah. the race cars, right? <laughs> yes, and that's that why I like awful. it so much. I was in the final, the final race. I finally got there. And I was I was winning, and my computer shut off because it sucked. It was a bad computer, oh, and I didn't save, no. and I I lost it. It sucked. That was a really <laughs> bad time for me. <laughs> Actual tears ruined my day. Um, as uh, we saw, any games make you cry because dude, you're dude they were I was hard, dude, they were I was a Mario Party kid. Okay, <laughs> I cried plenty of times over the games. I cried constantly. <laughs> that was that was never a dry eye. Yeah, no, it was Mario always was it was always anger and tears constantly. Best games I ever. <laughs> I guess uh, 2001 or pre 2000s. I got uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. It was probably one of the best. I like. Uh, oh, yeah, so it's, it's there's a pattern here where you where making your own stuff is definitely my favorite stuff to do. Yeah, and game. that's still before I became a 3D artist. Now. It's like Forge making Forge yeah. Mode and Halo, making uh, tracks or parks in Tony mm-hmm. Hawk, uh, making robots in Robot Wars. So yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Also, my brother had a Dreamcast. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Jet Set Radio and uh, Crazy Taxi were amazing. Crazy Taxi uh, is really good. Once that, that, really when, um, that other game that you said, Midtown Madness or something, that reminded yep. me a, a lot of Crazy Taxi, and at least the way that the driving felt. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it had, yeah, it, was, it had a free roam. I think it was one of the first games I ever played with a free roam mode that you could play cooperatively. Yeah, uh, good. because stuff like that wasn't super common when we were growing up. I feel mm-hmm. games with free roam, like really the only games with free roam that I had played and really free roam were like um, Super Mario sixty four yeah. and like Donkey Kong and Banjo Kazooie. Like there was there wasn't mm-hmm. a whole lot of like even like racing games that let you just ride around the map. Yeah. And I remember I would go to my friend Isaiah's house and he had. Uh, like, Tokyo Underground, or I don't remember what the name of the game was, something Underground, or something Tokyo, or something Club, who knows. But it was a racing game that had, like, racing, but you could Deep also just Deep Speed Underground 
Tokyo. No, I don't know. I don't know. Something Tokyo, and I think that there was a fat guy with sunglasses on the cover. <laughs> uh, but you could drive around, nice. and I would play it for That's hours nice. just because you could drive around. I like bought it for my GameCube. I like. I, yeah, like, just driving around was so around cool. That's house. why I like. That's why I like Grand Theft Auto so much. It's you know that. You just, run around, grab a car, and drive. That really influenced the way we played back then, too, because, like, everyone I knew who had Mario Kart 64, there was this track called Royal Raceway, and right after you got off one of the ramps, if you turned to the right, you could see Peach's Castle off in the distance, right? Midnight Club, sorry. It was Midnight Club, by the way. Uh. And if you drive over to Peach's Castle, it is an exact replica, like, to a T, of the one from Mario 64, like, same model, That's same so courtyard, everything, so... I would stop racing, and I would lose so many races just to drive over there and look around at everything. <laughs> yeah, because shame Mario Kart never did that. It's I had bad. so few games with exploration, you know? It's like, oh, you mm -hmm. know what racing game did that back in the old days was Diddy Kong Racing, because that game had yeah. a campaign, so you ah. could, like, travel around and not really my an open world, but, like, a bunch of connected worlds. That's pretty yeah, cool. I, I remember my brothers and I would, uh... There's two stories here. One is uh, Super or Mario Kart 64, mm -hmm. uh, that like desert level with the train track. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, we drive, we just drive through the train tunnel and see where it led. Oh <laughs> yeah, fun. I used to do that too. Yeah, yeah, we just lose the race and be like, oh, what happened? And then also, uh, oh geez, uh, NASCAR. I think it was like 2004. Uh, what we do is my brother and I we play together. And he would he would race, and I would uh, let everyone go, turn around, and just drive at everyone else. <laughs> and my brother would tell me what position he's in, and I would count cars going past me at hundreds of miles an hour. I just be like, okay, you're third. One, two, three. That's you. And then I just turn and slam to everyone else, and there would just be these huge pileups. <laughs> <laughs> and he would just win the race. <laughs> That's so <laughs> Because wild. everyone else was knocked out. It was One amazing. of those NASCAR games had a cheat code where you could shoot tires in front of you. <laughs> and they would hit cars and blow them up. <laughs> oh, wow. That's lovely. That's um, awesome. One game that I had that was kind of weird for the GameCube was... It was called Kelly Slater Pro Surfer. And it was literally just this game where you would surf. And you could enter surf competitions, but there was also a free mode where you could just take to the open water and just surf around. And it wasn't very good looking back. It was very simple. But I used to spend hours on that game just kind of surfing around. Yeah, just, you just know, that's, I had it. Just relaxing. This is exactly what Steep is going to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. I wonder I was if just this about is why that, Steep right? is going to be so This well. is yeah, why I'm interested in Steep. That's the type of stuff I'm interested in, you know? Mm -hmm. if I'm you can play a surfing game. That's cool. If you can make an environment ambient enough, I will spend however much time I need to there. I didn't progress in Xenoblade Chronicles because I liked some environments so much. Jeremy, you remember when I got Xenoblade yeah. Chronicles X and I was playing it in your place. I, you, were, I spent... you were like two hours into the game and you were just running around zones. Yeah, zone. exactly, just like, looking at stuff. Shouldn't you be like doing the main story? <laughs> I was like, like, oh, I want to go to this, this I was cool like, zone. I really want to look at everything, you know? This one's got lava, it looks cool, whatever. Yeah, exactly, you know? Right. Oh, I wonder man. if Steve is going to be good because uh, part of the reason that exploring games is interesting and is exciting maybe i don't know if this is true is because uh you have other stuff to be doing but mm -hmm. it's like well let me take a break it's like laughing in class when you know you shouldn't be laughing it's extra funny because you know you shouldn't be doing it mm -hmm. so i wonder if it's extra interesting is because usually you can't do it yet you're just doing it anyway That's you're kind of breaking idea. the rules as opposed to having that be all that there is to do i hope that steep doesn't like isn't too free form for people to I think to there's enjoy. a competitive element to Steve based on what they showed. I think it's the type yeah, of thing probably. where you can just explore and hang glide and move around if you want to, but the main core aspect of the game I think is going to be like skiing and snowboarding. I think it's safe to say we're all going to buy Steve. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm yeah, going to we probably I'm, will I'm going to buy new, Steve, guys. Yeah. It's going to be the <laughs> new GTA. GTA. That's where yeah. we are. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Also. That's all we use GTA for is hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Totally. This time on Mont Blanc. On Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Say what, guys? We are at about fifty minutes, so we I just want to do. I want to do game of the week and then oh. close out. So if you've got a game of the week, I would prefer. Yeah, I have a game of the week. 
Uh, and this is actually a surprise to me as well, because I've played this game a lot. My brother's a huge fan of it, and I've, I've tried to play it a lot, and I could never get into it. I would always just get bored and move on, and I always try to play with my brother. But with the new one coming out, I'm actually excited about it, and I played it recently and loved it. Uh, Civilization V, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, a couple days ago, I my brother and I are both very excited for Civ Six. He's a big-time mm -hmm. Civ fan, and I didn't like Civ V. Like, I would play it, but I just couldn't get into it, and it kind of bummed me out. But uh, we were talking about it, and then we ended up playing, and this was super fun, because like we were gearing up to play a couple nights ago, because our Overwatch crew wasn't on. Just a few of our friends were. Jeff and I, my brother, were gearing up to play a couple nights ago. Uh, and I'm, like, setting up our multiplayer server, and then another one of our friends gets in our TeamSpeak chat, and then he's like, oh, crap, I'll join, and then he plays with us, and, like, an hour in, another one of our friends gets on TeamSpeak, and you can actually take the place of an AI in an already existing game, so then he That's just jumped great. in, and then there were four of us, like, all playing Civ together, and it nice. was a blast. I had so much fun spreading Taoism. That was my <laughs> whole thing. Yeah. My whole thing was just spreading the glory of Taoism. I played Civ Rev, which was the console one, uh, a couple of years ago, and I had a lot of fun with that. But I don't know anything about it. I don't it's know. very different from yeah. the main games, but I still had fun with it. But that's that's my game of the week, is, is Civ Five. If you don't have it, it's probably dirt cheap on Steam right now. Mm -hmm. And Civ Six comes out in, I think, October, and that looks absolutely phenomenal. How about you, James? Got a game of the week for us? Um, This week, I... These are just games that I, I've just been going back to games that I've been playing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only managed to be able to play Overwatch. Uh, my brother was here, so we played Rocket League, and nice. I got to show I got to show someone Hell Divers, which yeah. is always a really fun experience. <laughs> uh, and he didn't have to do a tutorial, so that was, that was another that was another great thing. So those are my games of the week. Gotcha. Uh, the one I had most fun playing was Hell Divers because um, we got into it. <laughs> We got really into it, so I think I'm gonna go and play that again tonight with nice. with a, with friends. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, not really. Nothing new. Uh, I did buy the Mean Greens, so I'm excited to get my teeth into that. Uh, maybe that'll be my game of the week next week if I get around to actually playing it. Which yeah. I have three days off work coming up soon, right before Fourth of July. So that's exciting. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, my game of the week is. Mario Kart 8, which I've been rediscovering, you know, uh, oh, that yeah. I stand by this, with the exception of Xenoblade Chronicles X, Mario Kart 8 is the best looking game on Wii U, has the most it consistent frame rate, all the environments and atmosphere is just beautiful, I hate that there are like tribes and, you know, desert ships, everything in Mario Kart 8 is cooler than things in actual Mario games. And I'm always Way just like, cooler. always just like, just make this into a game instead. I'd rather play right? this. Like there was a shy guy that right. was in the woods, in the trees. I was like, whoa, this is so like cool. Like Ewoks or something. But mm -hmm. like, think maybe. I mean, with how different uh, Breath of the Wild is for Zelda, maybe we'll get something good out of Mario for the first yeah. time in several years. Yes, please do, Nintendo. You know, take take a page out of that book. Oh Are my God! Could you imagine like like a Paper Mario style? open world RPG adventure, but done with the aesthetics of Mario Kart 8. I can't imagine that because I would cry. I would actually be in tears just thinking about it. You know, that sounds amazing. Uh, imagine like a steep Mario Kart. That'd be pretty cool. Where it's like you that. can just go around, hang out, check it out. But it's all Mario Kart. Because like you said, you're deep. trying to... I think to... that's Forza. <laughs> that's the yeah. new Forza. <laughs> it is the uh... new Forza. <laughs> Alright, guys. So yep. we've got through that. So I'm going to close this out. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, those watching this on YouTube, feel free to comment what your favorite childhood games are. Or games you remember that you know suck now. Um, so that'll be all. I am going to post an updated posting schedule for the blog. Because, you know, things are changing again, as always. But um, thank you guys for tuning in, and come back soon for more from The Game.